Let's graph the linear equation for y equals 5x minus 2. And we're going to do this two ways. We'll use a table of values here, and then we'll check our work with slope-intercept formula. So let's put some values in for x, get values for y, and we can graph those points. It's always good to start out with 0, because 5 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 is minus 2. How about just 1? We could choose any values for x, get a value for y, and that point, it'd be on our line, but we want it to show up on our graph. So 1, that should show up on the graph when we put that in, because 5 times 1 is 5, minus 2 is 3. How about we put negative 1 in? 5 times negative 1, that's negative 5, plus a negative 2 is negative 7. So these are the points that we'll graph for the linear equation y equals 5x minus 2. Let's start out with x is 0, y is minus 2. x is 0, y is minus 2. We have x is 1, y is 3. x is 1, y is 3. We could stop there and graph this line here, but it's good to have a third point. Make sure we did the first part correctly. x is negative 1, y is negative 7. So negative 1 down to negative 7. And we can see they're in a line there. Let's put a line through them. And let's put arrows to show it goes to infinity. And that's the graph for y equals 5x minus 2. Let's check our work with slope-intercept formula. So we have y equals mx plus b. b is the y-intercept. That's negative 2. So we'd expect our line to cross the y-axis at negative 2. Right there it is. That's good. For slope, m, that's 5. But we like to think of that as 5 over 1. Still 5, but now we can say rise over run. So we go to our y-intercept, we rise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and go over 1. We could keep going up, rise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, go over 1. Or we could go in the opposite direction. We go back to our y-intercept, we go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1 to the left. So we did the first part correctly. This is the graph for y equals 5x minus 2. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.